think we are live. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining today. Going to just give it a couple of minutes to let a few people get on. All right, I'm starting to see some people. Hello, hello. I hope everybody is having a good week. We've all made it this far. That's sometimes saying something, right? <laughs> okay, hopefully everybody had a fun Halloween. I'm not ready to stop all of the fall projects though. I am still having fun with those. I'm looking forward to the Christmas ones, but I just want to give fall its due. So today's project is going to be done using a beautiful fall stamp set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch camera views. Sylvia so says hi. hi, Sylvia. How are you? Thanks so much for joining. Uh, and I see Jen. Hi, Jen. I'll hang on and say hi for just a second. Hi, Gina. Hope you guys are having a great week. All right, are you guys ready for me to jump in? Okay, Darren will try to catch. Darren, I need to thank you really quick. Darren always is so nice to moderate because I have a hard time doing two things at once. He's very good about that. So he'll help me know who I can say hi to. <laughs> and I'll just switch our camera view. Okay, let's get down to business. What, Darren? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, so Darren's going to let me know if um, my camera is in a weird spot or something. So the stamp set we're going to use today is called Pile of Leaves, and it is beautiful. I, I, it's kind of hard to see all of the detail in it. This is just the, the film cover. I've got it loaded on my Misty right now. But this is the one we're going to play with. And we're also going to use my favorite watercolor paper. This is aqua pigment paper. And this is amazing stuff. This works really, really well. If you enjoy working with wet mediums, this is a really good one to work with. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get one of those out because we're gonna need that. And Darren will put all the links up so you can find them easily on the Brutus Monroe site. Gina says hi. Hi, Gina. I said hi to one Gina. Do we have more than one Gina on? No. I oh, just, hi uh, twice, Gina. I got Facebook, so I didn't know. <laughs> it's all good. I'm um, amazed at how well you keep up with things as it is. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use our Misty. And as you can see, I have the old model. I'm not quite updated to the, to the new one yet. Oh, look, I'm more prepared than I thought I was. I forgot. I had already put that in there. So I'm just going to show you. I went ahead and made pencil marks because you want to know for sure. And I, I didn't want to use, because I've got the six by six dot, uh, stamp, I didn't want to use my magnets because they would be in the way, right? So I just put a little bit of tape down and just marked where the corners were of my paper and just stuck that on. And we're going to want to know that because we're going to do a couple of things here. So first thing we're going to do, we are going to use some Simon Hurley inks. Robin These, hi. hi Robin, we're going to use Slippery When Wet, Guppy, Traffic Cone, Bee Sting, Game Over, and hey, Gur. Kay says hi. Kay? Kay. Hi Kay. Alright, so we're going to go lightest to darkest because we don't want to muddy up our pads, right? So we're just going to kind of do an ombre effect on our stamp. And this is a fairly simple, hope you'll bear with me, this is a fairly simple technique, but I had so much fun creating it because I love this stamp set. And because even though it's so simple, it delivers a pretty, um, a pretty, what's the word I'm looking for? Dramatic finish. So just bear with me for a minute. So this is the Slippery When Wet, and we're just going to ink a little bit here at the top of our stamp. And you're just going to kind of want to kind of want to divide up your your stamp between how many ink pad colors you want to use. Just kind of eyeball it. 
And once you go to the next darkest, it's okay if it overlaps. That's not going to hurt your ink pad, but you just don't want to use your lighter ink pad over a darker ink, right? So this one is Guppy. So we're overlapping a little bit. And I'm mostly using the edge of my ink pad just because sometimes it's a little easier to work with. It's easier to kind of control. And I, I kind of want to control how far down I'm going down the stamp. Um, are you able to see, let me move this over a little bit so you can, you're, can you're you good. see this right here? Let me know in a minute. I'm thinking it might be easier to see where the ink is if I do it over the, the white part. If you move toward the white part, you'll be good. Okay, that's what I did. Okay, so this is Traffic Cone. Again, I'm overlapping a little bit and working my way down. And you don't want to like have a really harsh line going across. I kind of move up and down so I don't get that harsh definition in there. But really the next step is going to pretty much take care of that anyway. But just in case, I like to cover all my bases, you know. Bee Sting is the next one. Overlapping just a little. Jen says much better. Oh good, I'm so glad. Thanks, Jen. Simon already says, hey there. Hey Simon, recognize this? Love the inks you're using. Yeah, they're mighty fine. I like these inks too. <laughs> these are my favorite ink pads, as a matter of fact. Okay, game over. Tina says hi. Hi, Tina. So we're going to use our game over and again, we're just kind of overlapping. We want to leave a little bit of room because we're going to finish it off with our last color. All right, so now we're going to use Gur at the bottom. All right, so we have got that pretty well inked. And now I'm going to take, so this was a bottle of Squeaky Clean. I love Squeaky Clean. Um, that is a whole, nother, a whole nother thing we'll talk about after when we're ready to clean our stamp. But I will tell you that these bottles are perfect for a spritz if you want kind of a fine mist. I love that. So this that I have in here is white. I, this used to be, I know that if, um, I think it's, it's either, it's Kara, I think, that has a fondness for the Marshmallow Chicks squeaky clean too, but I sadly am out, so this is my empty bottle of that. Trust me, the squeaky clean, I'm just going to put a little plug in here for squeaky clean for a second, because if, if you're anything like me, I am totally a sucker for things like Bath and Body Works, those really fun scents, stuff like that, and Brutus Monroe is really fun because every season they get new scents. And right now we've got candy corn, we've got cinnamon apple, we've got bonfire, and um, pumpkin donut, I believe is the other one. So check those out. If you love to have something that smells really good, these are fun for that. Okay, and so there are probably are new ones coming out pretty soon, but I don't know exactly when. But these ones, you're going to want them. Okay, so I'm going to take my fine mist, and I'm just going to spray that from kind of far away, because I want to... I still want to get some of the detail of the stamp, but I want that color to move around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and squish that on my paper. And then we're going to open that up. Oh, apparently my, oh, my magnet's in the way. That explains that. Okay, and don't worry if your pattern is messed up because there's more to what we're doing. I'm going to get a little bit more in here. 
Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. We're gonna cheat a little bit. That's water in the bottle now? It is water in the bottle, yes. Excuse my heat tool for a minute, but we wanna kinda do this the quicker way. I didn't hear that. Hang on one sec. This darned heat tool is going to make some noise. I'm sorry. I need to get one of those ones that are quieter. But I haven't done that yet. All right. Gina asked if there's going to be Christmas squeaky cleans. Yes, I believe there are. And Simon said that looks awesome. Isn't this fun? Simon, you ought to know. All right. So then I want to do it again. I'm not satisfied with just once. I like to get all that fun color. So we're going to do it again. In fact, when I created this, I, I like to do a pra practice run. Some people like Michael and Christopher are way better at rolling with the punches when something doesn't quite work out. It freaks me out more. So I like to do a couple practice runs to know that things are going to work out. And even then I have my moments. If I go live, you just never know. Okay, so then we can go ahead and we could hit that with the heat tool again. And just kind of layer that color. And I like getting the little variances. And you don't have to hit it, hit it with the heat tool. You could actually just let that air dry. Um, I'm going to hit this one more time with the water. And this will be our last, our last time with this because we want to move on to the next step. As exciting as this is, we want to see what happens next. All right, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, that's good. I wanted to get a little bit more in there. So... I'm gonna let that dry. What I did when I made this on my practice run, that was what I started to say and kind of ended my story abruptly, sorry, is I actually put it like this and just because it lifts up a little bit, it might be because my um, the little pad I have in my Misty might be a little bit too tall, I'm not sure. But because it lifted a little, I actually set a couple of blocks on top of it and just let all of everything that was gonna run out, run out. And I left it like that for I have probably an hour. But we don't have an hour to wait for that to dry. So I'm going to show you the next step. I do have one of these already dry. We're just going to take this guy off. I'm going to save that for later because I want to use that. It's so pretty. So this is the one that I have. And because I have all my pencil marks lined up, I know exactly where I want to put it. Viviana says hi. Hi, Viviana. She thinks that your work is amazing and you inspire her every time she watches your videos. Oh my gosh, that is the sweetest thing ever. Thank you so much, Viviana. You just made my whole day. Okay, back to squeaky clean for a second. I'm just going to do a quick spritz. I'm going to use pumpkin donut. And this is just going to wipe right off. And I'm honestly, I'm not going to be too concerned to get this one off as much as the next one I put on because we're actually going to add black ink over the top of this. Now this I think is beautiful all by itself. I would use that in a heartbeat. I love it. But I kind of wanted to go, I guess I was feeling a little bit dramatic. I wanted to go with a little bit more dramatic flair on mine. So I wanted to see what would happen if I used black on top of that and just got all the definition of the stamp on there because I think the stamp is so beautiful I wanted to get all those little details so we are going to use our Raven detail ink Craven Kay says she's been using crafts to distract herself today she's not watching TV you know what Kay I'm with you I I think crafting is a great way to distract yourself I find I love to color when I am stressed out coloring is one of my favorite things to do. I um, 
I will just sit down with my family and I can do it while I'm watching TV or something and I don't feel like I'm completely a couch potato if I'm doing something and um and I love to take my time coloring. I actually I know some people don't love to color but I I do. I love that process. Okay. So we want to get it good and covered. And we'll probably do this a couple of times just because we want to get really good coverage with this. And because it's watercolor paper, it's going to have that little bit of texture to it that makes it a little harder to get uh, really defined lines. Though I think this paper works better than a lot of them. I really like this paper. It's a little flatter. Let's see how... So I don't know. I I don't anybody who has a new Misty, one of the new models, let me know. I have a hard time getting the middle of my images unless I push really hard. Do you guys have that problem? Or is, am I doing something wrong? I've had this for a few years, but I just I struggle with well, and I know that this is a big stamp and sometimes that's a tricky thing too. But um I'm just curious to know if there's a difference in the models if it if that changed anything and I apologize if I'm shaking the table okay see so you can't see a lot yet it's just gonna take a couple of a couple of runs through Kay says she's making alcohol ink bags what is an alcohol ink bag sounds cool I'm very intrigued what is that Gina says it's easier if you use a cloth to rub along with to rub along the top. I guess. I'll have to try it. I'll show you what I ended up doing last night and it seemed to help some. Because I've got this taped in place, sometimes I will turn my Misty over because yes, then. then I can use my weight to my advantage. One yeah. time in life I can. <laughs> Jen says she is one of the whiteboard erasers. Oh, what a smart idea, Jen. Might have to try that. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, see, now we're getting the, de the defining lines in there. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, let's just ink it up again. And there are so many little details in this stamp. It's a beautiful stamp. And this is a great one. If you're not a big colorer, this is, this is a great way to get a bunch of color on your card without having to grab your, your markers or your pencils. Simon says sometimes with the old one, I found taking the magnets out helped. Ah, thank you, Simon. Done. All right, it seemed like this is where I was kind of struggling to get as much color. Sorry, I keep bumping that camera. I apologize. We really are not experiencing an earthquake here. Shannon's just stamping again. Kay said it was alcohol in the background. Alcohol, alcohol ink background. Oh, alcohol ink backgrounds. That makes more sense. That sounds fun. I have not done a lot with those yet. I, I played with the, um, I've used like alcohol markers to make some backgrounds and that was a lot of fun. But as far as using like, um, just the ink by itself, I haven't done a lot of that yet, but I, it's, it looks like a lot of fun. I'll tell you, I'm going to have to do that. So many techniques, so little time, right? Okay. So this, I think will work. I'm going to show you that. I would maybe even have gone one more time with that black. I'll show you the one that I did last night. I did cut it down a little bit to fit my card. 
pretty much the same thing but I think I did go one more time on this one you can see it gave it just a little bit more definition but not a lot so now we need to make a card with this beautiful background isn't it pretty and easy ah thanks thank you Simon okay and isn't this just I love techniques that are just easy that look like you spent forever on them those are the best Especially if you need to make several cards. Okay, can't promise that this is completely straight, but we're going to go with it. And I put that wet one that I just did on top of this. That's why this has a little bit of a warp in it. I did not pay as close attention as I should have. Okay, so let's get all of our elements. Isn't it a pretty stamp? Dern did link the the link to that if you are interested in it so I wanted to just we're going with the drama so I'm gonna go ahead and put just that little it's kind of an eyelash trim around that just that thin little defining mat just to make it pop a little bit more and I'm just gonna use my tissue tape love this stuff Darren's going to put the stamp set back up again, just so it's easy to find. So do you guys make cards for Thanksgiving? I make, I'm more likely to make like tags, things for table settings, which might be something else I do this month. We shall see. I love Christmas so much that I get so excited to do all the Christmas projects that I just don't want to sweep Thanksgiving away. But I do have to get all the Christmas in that I can, too. All right. If I can get this last little piece peeled off. There we go. Can't ask why the camera's so far away. You know, I just have it mounted on my table. I... Um, I guess I need to adjust it a little bit. I will hold it up a little closer so you can see the detail in it. I don't know if that helps a little bit. And then, I don't know, I know you guys have probably seen me rave about these dies. I think they are some of the prettiest dies I own. And these are the autumn leaf dies. I was off camera when I held it up. Sorry about that, guys. So I'll show you that. And then I'm going to show you these dies. These are beautiful. These, what is so fun about these? I mean, I love them anyway. I think they have great shape to them. I love that they're not just your standard, like, um, symmetrical leaves. I love that there's some movement in them. And also... If you look really closely, excuse all the ink on my hand, you can see that they actually emboss too. You get some detail in the leaves themselves. And I actually think, let me see if I've got all my blending brushes out here. I think I have all but my yellow. No, I do have my yellow. Let's use a little bit of ink on the edges of our, of our leaves just to give them a little bit more oomph. We're going to use our slippery one wet again. And this is the Pink and Main Ergonomic Blending Brush. I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit. Just to add a little bit more life to our dye. And then I like to kind of shape mine a little bit. I'm just kind of curving them inwards. You can use your fine mist spray again on your die cuts if you want to move your paper around a little bit. Don't be afraid to do that. And then I'm going to use, I think I'll try traffic cone on my 
orange leaf. And it's not going to be really dark. It's just giving it a, a little bit of a variance on it. So it's just not quite the flat color that it was, you know? And especially where this is also soft. I, I like the drama, I like all that, but I, I don't want it to look out of place on my card. So I think we needed to soften it up just a little bit. Okay. That is the only place I love drama <laughs> is in my cards or in my TV shows or something. I do try to avoid it in other areas. <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to go ahead and, you know, let's go ahead and put this on our, our base. Just one less piece of paper to keep track of. And I like it lightest to darkest, but obviously you can do it either way. Create your own ending. I've heard that somewhere before. And let's go ahead and use some of our foam squares just to give a little bit of dimension to our die cut. A little bit more, I should say, because we've already given it some. And I'm not, I'm not creasing the paper. I'm just bending the paper because I don't want all the crease lines. I'm just kind of curving it with my finger. So it's kind of a soft movement. You don't want to be too abrupt or else, of course, it will crease. And even if it does crease, it's probably fine. It's not a huge, a huge deal. It's kind of a preference thing. I like mine without the, cre the crease in my paper a lot of time, depending on what I'm doing. I say that and then... I'll make something and it'll be completely contradictory to that. Okay, I just remembered why I didn't want to connect that, but that's okay. We're going to just improvise. <laughs> I'm going to use a little of my black twine. And instead of, I was going to tie it around, but I obviously I'm changing my mind now because I forgot and I really don't want to peel that off. So I'm just going to, just to kind of anchor down our sentiment a little bit. I'm just going to do something super simple. I'm going to take, let's see, what do I want to glue that down with? I think I'm just going to actually use some glue. Let's use some of our crafty glue. I think we'll just stick a little of it there. And then I kind of try to let the twine decide where it wants to go. We don't need a lot. We're just giving this a little bit more of a base. And I probably got more glue on there than I wanted to, but that's okay. We will work with that. Well, that did not work at all. Hang on. My glue got a little out of control. So you kind of want to land it all so the glue is in the same spot. We're just going to set that there for a second so that it will dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to put a few of these little enamel dots on there. I'm a bit of an enamel dot junkie, I admit. I love them. They just work with everything. Okay, we just about have that. And I think for this guy, I'm gonna cut my 
foam squares a little bit. So I'm just going to cut them so that I can fit them on my die cut. You can see better if I do it on the white. And you can see better if I do it on the white. So I'm doing all the talking again. Am I missing any comments, Darren? No. Nope. You're so good. Thank you for helping me out. And let's Everybody's do... Just watching, I guess. All right. Let's do one more kind of across the bottom to secure it. Okay, two more across the bottom, I should say. All right, and now we'll just get all those little adhesive backers off, and we can stick this guy down and see what we have come up with. Gina said she's watching while she works. That's the best. That's I love to watch YouTube while I'm crafting. Okay. think we have got it. I don't like that one there. Hang on. Bear with me. My placement was off a little bit. Okay. So, I kind of wish I had tied that around, but I think it's okay how it is. Kayleen is on. Hi, Kayleen. So there you have it. How easy was that? Super simple background, but it delivers a fun punch. Just kind of a fun, dramatic um, background for that. I think what I'm going to do with, with some of mine is I think I'm going to cut them into tags and put them on some mason jars and put different people's names on them for the table setting at Thanksgiving. Put a little tea light in the bottom. All right, thank you so much. Let me just switch camera views so I can say a proper goodbye. Excuse my big old hand. Oh, I think I just cut us off. I hope not. Oh, there we are. Sorry about that. Me and my technical amazing genius. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you had fun and that you learned something new or were inspired to try something new. And we will have something fun to do next week. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.